everyone, it's Gothic Lehman here. So today I thought I would finally rediscover this video, this tag, because I did it once when my channel was new and I really didn't like how I did the video so I thought I would delete it and now I'm finally back to start it again and this is my 10 non-gothic confessions. Reason I'm saying gothic is because I've never really associated myself as a goth because there's such a high standard to what goth is but I've always called myself a gothic person. I love gothic things, I have very strong gothic interests, hence the channel Gothic Lee Man. So this is my my attempt of I guess losing some goth points in a sense. I hope you don't get too upset with me. But I find life is a journey and everyone is unique and an individual in their own ways and I find what makes someone so unique and interesting is all the layers to their personalities. So adding layers to my personality, here are things that I love as growing up, I still love to this day, and they're not always necessarily considered goth or gothic interests. So the first one is musicals. Apparently, as a little girl, my mum told me that I would watch the movie on repeat several times a day, um, The King and I. So I think my love of that movie come from her big skirt because she had the proper wire frame underneath her skirt and it would move and I have such a love for that Victorian fashion so I think that started my love but the love of the music side of things hasn't gone away from there. Um, I love movies like The Grease, West Side Story, I loved um, Moulin Rouge is one of my favourites. Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is also sometimes beloved in the gothic subculture. I love Chicago, Leah Marbles, I'm obsessed with that movie. I love a lot of those happy, feel-good musical types. I even like The Blues Brothers. That was such a good movie. And I also loved Glee. I like Glee. I'll admit I'm a Gleek. So, but I also love really gothic vibe musicals like The Devil's Carnival and Sweeney's Todd Demon in a Barber, yo. So I love gothic musicals or musicals with like a really dark gothical feel to them. I generally watch them all. Like one of my favourites is Repo Genetic Opera. If you have not seen that one, you will be very pleased with that one. So I think we will move on now. I also went and saw a musical reintake of Adam's Family Live, which I put, I'll put the description of where that is on my channel. So I'll move on. Oh, and Labyrinth. I cannot forget Labyrinth in this I'd be crazy not to end Nightmare Before Christmas before I move on. Phantom of the Opera is also a musical that's beloved. And the birds are fighting. Domestic. Thank you. They'll probably keep squawking. If it's not children interrupting my videos, it is birds interrupting my videos. But this is the safest place for me to go to try and film a video in this house. So please... Bear with me. So my second one is my relationship status. Well, I don't really attract to gothic men. I know that might be a shock horror. Like my partner of nine years is a non-goth. He's never had a gothic inkling or a gothic bone in his body. And I am quite comfortable with that. And I love the fact that he's not gothic as well. To be honest, I probably find gothic guys a little too serious, to be honest. And I want someone that's more of 
like a caring heart and free fun nature I don't because I'm very serious I'm a serious person I don't need another serious person in my life not to say I won't have gothic guys as friends or gothic girls as friends it's just for relationship side of things and who I can picture my life partner to be I don't really want another gothic person so the next movie I like is non-gothic movies and movies that are quite controversial to the gothic subculture like Queen of the Damned. I actually enjoyed that movie even though people that have read the books get quite angry with that movie which I can understand but I do enjoy gothic movie like goth movies as well as non-gothic movies because they're just fun care hearty things to watch so I watch a lot of TV series and I'll watch things like Vampire's Diaries all the way to Supernatural to American Horror Story to I'll even watch Jane the Virgin which is on a completely different scale again but I actually like stuff that sort of branches from the gothy norm as well. So number four is my pyjama selection. So normally what happens to me is if I get given coloured clothing, like say from my mother or something, I will turn that into pyjamas. Like yes, I have black sweatpants and comfy pants that I'll sleep in and sometimes like a black, black tank top. But if I have like a purple top or something like extreme white or yellows, they just become pajamas and lounging clothes just because I don't have the heart to chuck them away because I've been my mum's bought them for me and given them to me or relatives and you know how that awful feeling you don't you got to kind of be polite and say oh I love it but really no no I don't love it at all so colored clothes become pajamas in this house so I'm up to number five um, I went through a really unusual teenage hippie stage to try and fit in with my friends at the time. Um, one of my best friends, she comes from a very hippie, hippie family. They're really, really, I love them to bits. And I guess I want, like, being my best friend, I wanted that. I want to, I just idolised her. She just was so comfortable in her own skin, the confidence to wear all these weird bright clothing and I just wanted to be a piece of that if that makes sense. So I went through a really unusual hippie fashion stage. Well I went through like a, I guess a goffy emo for the start of it and then I went through this weird hippie trying to fit in with these people my friends because of course I was in my school goth wasn't really a thing in high school from Australia it wasn't as big as like the UK's or America so there was literally only two goths in the whole school being me and a, a chick that was in her last year of high school and I was too scared to talk to her but her boots were amazing just she was just amazing but I didn't really have anyone to influence me so I had to kind of come in it to my own and find myself so so the hippie was a weird transitioning stage I needed to go through to reconnect me back to know I don't really like this this ain't me but I still love the gothic stuff and interests so I'm glad I went through it but we all have our little things as teenagers that we have to go through and that was mine so I guess it wasn't too tragic it could have been a lot worse I guess so number six on my list is I like teen vampire books I actually really enjoy teen vampire books just because they're really easy to read and that's mainly why I just want sometimes when I want to curl up to a book I just want to chill out and read something that's not going to, you know, take too much of my attention. I like to get sapped into those sappy sob stories. So, of course, I love 
books like I enjoyed the Twilight books. I enjoyed Blood of Eden, which is another vampire series, A House of Nights, um, Frostbite, which is a book series off Vampire Academy series. I've probably read the Vampire Academy series about eight times now, I swear, and still love it to death and will happily start it again and keep reading it. So, yes, I love teen vampire books. Not to say, like, Anne Rice and Dracula, I don't love them. I love those books too. But just so when I'm non, like, when I'm just in a chilled out mood, I want to get out of my headspace. I will generally gravitate to a teen vampire style book just because they're easy to read. The writing, the language style is just easy and that's what I enjoy about them. So number seven is, of course, music. We all understand I love gothic music and I'm very passionate about the gothic bands I love. But I also like bands that are non-gothic too and that's just because you can't help it. It's not like you turn on the radio and they're playing Typo Negative or Sisters of Mercy. Unfortunately, it is going to be a pop song that's trendy at the time. So, of course, I'm going to find it fun and to sing to or dance to and, you know, and I can't help that. And that's my partner as well. He likes that sort of music too and I can't sort of always deny him in the house wanting to listen to music like I play my music when I want to play it but I've also got to allow him to play music when he wants to play it it's it's respect as well so of course I'm sorry but I do appreciate where the gothic music come from and I'm a big believer in you can't be goth unless you like the music Sorry, that's a very elitist opinion. Not that I'm going to go, you can't be goth or whatever, but that's just who I am and that's my opinion. So, and I guess being in my mid-twenties as well, I have a very, that style of thinking because that's the style of thinking we grew up with when we came in, first come into the gothic subculture, first getting the internet and all that fun stuff. So number eight on my list is Disney movies. And I think I'm not the only gothic person out there that loves Disney movies. Like Disney movies are quite fantastic and well done. And I love classics like Aladdin. And um, I'm drawing a blank. Sorry, there's just Hercules, all those fun Disney movies. But I'm also very controversy with the Disney movies I love. The two favourites of those classic cartoons, I love Anastasia and Beauty and the Beast. I see a lot of myself in Bella as well with um, my interests in books. I'm a bit of a, I guess, a bookworm. Um, I'm, my dream is to be a librarian. I'm currently six, maybe four units away from finishing my first certificate to work in a library and then I'm going to move up from there, but I see a lot of myself in Belle and also with um, I see beauty where it's not expected or in people that get shunned a lot as well. Like, you know, I gravitate to the weird and unusual people. Um, so I see myself in, you know, Bella a lot. So, yes, I love Disney movies. So number nine is... I have a very pagan, Wiccan interest. I love all that Wiccan, pagan stuff, but I don't follow the religion myself. So I have millions of crystals around my house. I love the healing properties of crystals. And so see here, I've got a carnelian in here at the moment, and that's good for good home roots. And feeling comfortable in your home and your surroundings. I do tarot cards. i got angel cards. I've got afterlife cards. I will do readings. I'm also a very intuitive person. Like, I can sense things about other people. and Like, I have abilities, but I don't fully know what those abilities are. Like, apparently relatives can astro-project in my family and I think 
I do try to astro project in my sleep, but I get a full body shudder. My body just shudders. I think I try to protect myself from doing stuff like that just because I don't trust my own abilities yet. Like I'm just, it's something that I've always had, but I've never always explored it. But it's just, it comes in strange times. Like I'll get feelings of dread and my personality completely changes and I don't understand why and then I'll find out later that something really horrible had happened and and that is generally why so I've got to discover it a bit more and I guess I love I am also obsessed with that demons paranormal interest stuff I'm very obsessed with all that just because I am so intuitive and I know I am and a lot of the crystals I gravitate to naturally are psychic protection crystals so I am always trying to protect myself psychically for some reason and I guess that is because I'm such a guarded person being a crap Capricorn I'm guarding myself from negativities and things that I just can't explain or unknown so my last, so going on without dragging on too much about that is my last one, number 10 on my list is my kids. Yes, I am a mum. Are my children gothic? No, I'm not going to say they're gothic or little goth baby bats at this stage. They're discovering their own little personalities and who they want to be and the people they are and their interests and I'm not going to force them to be what I am and what I like so of course they're their own people and if I'm going to go kick a ball with my kids and be silly and watch superhero movies and you know play with Lego and blocks and stuff I'm not going to stop doing all those fun kid stuff and going to um, kids events and activities you know I'm gonna be silly with my children and you know I've learned a lot from my children and being um, a mum of two autistic children have really made my life very interesting and learning that they're very unique inner syncrasies of life so I hope you enjoyed my 10 non-gothic confessions instead of saying goth confessions so please let me know if you enjoyed my video please do not hesitate to comment like subscribe to my videos thank you for watching bye